What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Progressive Gentleman Podcast. I'm Dan. I'm Matt. And as always, thanks for taking the time to listen to us nerd out about music. So we're bringing kind of a diff, or not different. We're bringing a an old type of uh, episode back. It's the general transmission episodes, but we've kind of felt that in the past they were a little like structured, like formal, like. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, to like, as... we're, here's this section of news, then yeah. moving on to this section. We were kind of just regurgitating shit that you probably already read from Metal Sucks or Loudwire or saw pop up on your Instagram feed or some shit. So, yeah. I mean, because basically that's where we heard it from, right? We were just <laughs> yeah. basically, you know... It was it was almost borderline plagiarism. <laughs> you know, don't don't call the cops on us or the plagiarism police or whoever. We the were fuck just passing on shit. the good word of Loudwire. <laughs> but um, I don't know when we would listen back to on those episodes, we'd be like, eh, I don't really like this this structure. And some of the feedback we had gotten uh, was sort of like, well, we want to know more about you guys. We want to know more about what's going on. And I think sort of retooling the uh, general transmission episode to be kind of more informal and just, you know, a little bit about us, what we've got going on, but also still keeping with some music topics. I think that kind of sounds like a better sort of use of that general transmission. Cause that's a cool, <laughs> yeah. that's a cool enough name, right? So yeah. I think we're going to, we're going to give that a shot today, but I think we do want to start a little bit, not with news, like just general news, but kind of news about the podcast. Right. I think that's yeah. a good place to start. So um, we just hit over 300 followers on Instagram. Obviously that's not a huge number. You know, you see some of these accounts with, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, whatever, <laughs> but we've been doing this for like eight months now. Right. You know, we're not really, yeah. well, this is, this is episode 18, I think. So, you know, we're not, we've not been around for a long time. So we'll, we'll take that as, as a win there. Um, yeah, well, also, like, specifically, it's, like, a niche of, like, progressive rock and metal podcast on Instagram. <laughs> so, like, you have to take that with a grain of salt because the the pages that have, like, 100,000 followers are, like, I'm a fitness model or something. Right. And it's like... We're not showing any butt cheeks on Instagram. So, so I mean, not yet. If that's going to work, if you, <laughs> if you know more people that will follow us, if we start showing a little leg or a little cheek, you know, let us know. Um about to but, start the <laughs> the progressive gentleman only fans coming soon <laughs> um <laughs> but uh but no i mean we're we're really appreciative of the following that we do have and i mean people seem to really respond well to our content and, and we really appreciate that i mean enough that we have listeners now in 19 countries which is insane that's that, wild to me that <laughs> as someone from just one singular other country yeah. listens like it's just crazy to me that like podcasts are big enough that it's like people in like Japan and stuff yeah. are listening to our podcast. It's we got really listeners cool. in Japan. We got listeners a lot in Australia. Shout out to everybody in Australia listening to this right now. We really appreciate you down under over there. Yeah. But um, Australia, Canada, the UK. I think uh, Germany just had Germany, like a yeah. surge lately. Yeah. We talked about a German band in our most recent Hidden Gems episode, uh, Monosphere. Those guys are sick. So yeah. if you're from Germany and you haven't listened to those guys definitely check them out i'm sure they probably play shows near you more often than they play near us so <laughs> definitely go check those guys out if they're somewhere but yeah i mean 19 countries that's that's great the fact that people in 19 countries want to even listen to my voice is insane <laughs> to me so i don't even want to listen to my own voice so <laughs> that's how i feel <laughs> so i mean that's awesome uh we're working on some new content uh in particular we've been in conversations with some bands both local and not um for you know some maybe some band interview content uh you know just sit down with some of these guys virtual or otherwise and uh yeah you know, i think like initially we had some people reach out but we were like concerned about making it work virtually it work and sound like, good it's slash like we didn't know what kind of like how we don't know what to, we barely know what we're doing right now <laughs> yeah. let alone like you know, we don't want to sit down with these guys and just be pure amateurs. I mean, we know we're amateurs, right? That's why. <laughs> yeah, I mean. but at least the amateurism <laughs> is contained in the, right. in the room in which we're recording, and it's not uh, out for the 
exactly. with the other bands, and uh, exactly. we but, don't want to put them into this uh, like dumpster fire <laughs> that we've got going. But but eighteen episodes deep, we're we're starting to feel a little. I mean, nineteen countries. You got us. You got us feel a little confident now. So we're like, you know what? We're gonna give it a shot. So, yeah. So uh, thank you, everybody. The absolutely. bands that have reached out to us that yes. want to act, that like listen to our podcast. It's just that it's awesome to know that there are bands that we enjoy listening to that also listen to us like that's super cool yeah and we've we've had bands we'd love that are to do on interviews. labels and stuff reaching out to us like we want to send you we want to send you stuff and we want to you know i mean that's that's surreal it's things that we wouldn't necessarily have ever expected so uh we really appreciate the support um you know on top of that i mean there's some other stuff in the works too we've been in conversations with some brands uh some that likely you guys have heard of. Uh, and if not, you will maybe soon um, for some sponsorship opportunities that seem pretty promising. So uh, one in particular seems very promising. There's some other potentials out there as well. And uh, so that's super exciting. That's something yeah. that I didn't think was going to be, you know, when we first did this, it was more like, we're just going to sit down and bullshit about music and, you and know, we're probably going to have five <laughs> listeners and yeah, we're going to shout to the void. No one's going <laughs> to listen, but it's like, it'll be fun for us to yeah. do just as like a creative outlet. And the fact that we actually have gotten listeners is just surreal. And the fact that the beyond like, you know, just, just people listening that it's like some of the bands that we enjoy listening to that yeah. also listen to us is just like, this is nuts. Literally one of my favorite bands of all time. And just like a band that means so much to me, darkest hour follows us. Like that's <laughs> insane to me. Like we, we showed up to a show. Um, and when he saw my shirt, cause I, I was wearing a progressive gentleman shirt. That's another thing that might be coming soon, by the way, we might have some kind of merch situation coming up. So look, look out for that. But he saw my shirt and he's like, Oh, that's you guys. And, I mean, that moment for me was like surreal. We might have we might have briefly mentioned that on our Darkest Hour concert review episode. Yeah, I think we might have. But just like things like that, it's just, you know, it makes us want to keep doing this. And we weren't sure when we first started if we would stick to it this long even. Um, yeah. You know, we had even mentioned like, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Because both of us kind of have a have a tendency to start something and, and <laughs> yeah. you know, give up on it pretty it's like, quickly. Get, ex <laughs> get excited, get gung ho and then start it and be like, yeah, I don't have the, uh, <laughs> the mental capacity to keep up <laughs> with something like this, but we both enjoy it as a creative outlet. And it's cool to see that other people have, you know, similar interests and like, it's fun interacting with people that have, it's like kind of, you know, creating a community for people. And I mean, just beyond like interacting with people that listen to the podcast is like, hopefully they're also interacting together and like right. fans are also making friends and yeah, like, and we're, we're cool trying to community. We're trying to come up with content as well that, you know, create some interaction. Like, you know, we made the post about what's your top record so far this year. And we were trying to sort of promote, you know, everybody, you know, our audience essentially, but also us as well to just kind of interact on that post. Well, I think this one's the top. Oh, I haven't listened to that one yet. I need to go check that out. Or, oh, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think it's this one and just create some sort of, you know, communication community, as you said, you yeah. know, within, within our audience and, uh, you know, and some of the messages we've received, I mean, it's just been so much positivity uh, people telling us, oh, you know, it's so great that something like this exists. And we're just like, we, I, I we don't even know how to respond to that because it's like, I, I don't understand. I don't understand why you like us. <laughs> so you we're know, honored. And yeah. Oh, absolutely. I don't want that to come off negatively. Yeah. I'm just saying we're just, we're, we're humbled really. I mean, we're shocked a little bit as well. I mean, speaking for myself personally, but, uh, we really appreciate it. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, that's kind of really all I think. Uh, I mean, we did have one more other thing too, and that's, you know, we've been talking with some other podcasts as well, getting some feedback, sort of interacting with them. Um, potentially like some crossover episodes might happen. Yeah. Um, some some other podcasts that are, that are about our size as well. So just, you know, try to, you know, help them up. They help us up, you know, share audiences and stuff like that. And it's just, it's been cool. We've just gotten a lot of positive feedback from the, progressive slash you know metal community as a whole and uh that's the great. thing that's so cool yeah that's the thing that's so cool about the community is i mean they're obviously like the you know the the gatekeeper elitist metalhead people but i feel like the majority of metalheads are like down-to-earth cool friendly people and just like enjoy 
nerding about music. Yeah. So <laughs> slogan. Yeah, I threw it in there. You and, gotta put that on a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, but I think like that's what's so cool is like actually getting that interaction. That was like the biggest thing for me is with like wanting to do a podcast for so long. But just like the fear of like the rejection of people being like, <laughs> you're an idiot. And it's like so far everybody has been like really cool and friendly and like it's it's awesome getting to see. And like there are people that regularly comment that it's like, oh, this person like, you know, we, yeah, we know when we start recognizing people. It's like, oh, it's someone like, you know, we, we figure people are going to stumble on us. Right. Like that's going to happen. I mean, if you put something out into the Internet, someone's bound to stumble upon it. Right. So. You know, we figure we when we started this that we would get people that would show up, listen, be like, "What is this garbage?" and you know, go away or or <laughs> yeah. give you know. But we've had people like re- repeatedly interact with our content, and you know, that was something that maybe we didn't fully expect in the beginning. So it's really cool that that's how things have sort of transpired. You know, like it's it's pretty awesome. Yeah, I th- I'm. Uh... Super happy that, <laughs> to see that there are people that enjoy it and and stuff. And, uh, you know, I know we say this like every episode about just, you know, comment on our stuff. And like we, we do actually like we mean it. We want the interaction and we enjoy talking about music. I mean, that's why we're we're doing this. It's not like for for a monetary reasons like we it's, don't make money by the way. There's, <laughs> yeah. there's no there's no mon like even if we get these sponsorship things that we're working on it's not really for mon it's not really a monetary gain it's more like you know hopefully the fact that we're sponsored by xyz brand <laughs> means that people will like think that we're legit or more legit or whatever or want to listen to us i don't there's none of this was ever set up like oh we're gonna go make money it was more like oh let's just have a reason to bullshit about music together and yeah and it's like if we can make money to like upgrade equipment and make the podcast better then and that's, that's really, great but that's like basically the goal is like yeah and that's really the aim with the sponsorships too is like we're not looking to get paid we're looking to get a microphone that wasn't 35 dollars. you know what i mean like <laughs> something like that so um and even if we don't i mean i like the gear we have i'm having a good time and i enjoy yeah. sort of you know, the setup we already have is great. And I, I've already gotten more out of this podcast than I ever anticipated to. And, and it's good that, you know, we've become a lot closer as friends as well doing this, yeah. which has really been like probably the best part of this podcast in general for me personally. And, uh, yeah, me too. It's cool to like, I mean, you know, we like talk outside of the podcast very right. regularly, yeah. but I think there's just like another thing about like being in the same room, hanging out and like, sharing our love of music together instead of you know the more like hey man how's it going yeah it's just like what's up what are you up to (laughs) so yeah i mean and so in that vein so what's been up with you lately man (laughs) uh uh, just uh got back from vacation uh me and my wife for anyone who's new to the the podcast my wife colleen who's been on a few episodes um we went to carolina beach for like the week and um we uh we went down kind of just like uh it was a break between my classes for summer and fall so we uh squeezed in a vacation before the weather started getting cold and um had a good time just, you know drank a bunch on the beach and oh, went yeah. to some <laughs> then went to some breweries <laughs> you got a pregame before those breweries yeah that's, important. that's, that's a pro tip we went to a bunch of restaurants out in the area um there's a lot of cool shops and like the boardwalk out there, um, went to a skate shop and, uh, you know, the, just the kid in me was like <laughs> skateboards. So I, uh, you know, had to buy a, a cruiser board. Um, nice. so, um, you I know, would break my neck at this point. I don't even think <laughs> well, I can stand up on a skateboard right now. I've only, uh, only ridden it like twice so far, uh, with, you know, being back in, class and work and stuff from vacation I haven't much time to practice but uh you know maybe I will break something we'll see <laughs> <laughs> try not to try it's not still to. early yeah well I'm gonna try not to but uh yeah it was it was fun and um awesome. yeah and the, the ride down got a lot of music listening it was like oh, about yeah. a 12 hour uh drive with stops um listen to a bunch of the contortionist uh in preparation for that show coming up hell yeah rivers um, of nile and the contortionist yeah that's gonna be so sick yeah and uh 
that like just the nature of how Spotify like kicks into like the radio station once you finish. So we listened to language and then it shifted and we played some, it was like Chon and just like a bunch of other prog rock, prog metal bands that came on and, uh, nice. listen to that a lot. That was the majority of the way, um, the, on the like tail end of the way down and like most of the way back, we listened to a little bit of, uh, the like pop punk, like kind of emo stuff. Yeah. Colleen's, at the... Colleen's bread and butter. Right yeah. Now, which is all about that. I mean, so is my wife, Stephanie, she's a big pop punk fan and yeah, that was like music and all that stuff. That's like brings, brings you back <laughs> to what, like middle school days, maybe early high school days. I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. We, we listened to that like on, cause she drove in the first part of the, the ride to Carolina Beach and we left at like 5 a.m. So it was like something that we knew lyrics to was like upbeat and catchy to like kind of keep us energized keep and, and focused. Yeah. So we put that on and jammed for most of the way down and then like towards the tail end put on the contortionist and then on the way back it was mostly my stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like prog rock, prog metal stuff. Nice. So yeah, it was a, it was a good time. Uh, now I'm back to, back to work and the semester started, uh, college boy. Yeah. With, uh, <laughs> with a vengeance, Got, uh, <laughs> those master levels classes don't mess around. <laughs> yeah. I, I can imagine. I, uh, you know, hit that bachelor's degree and just hit the stop sign for me. I'm done with that. Shit. <laughs> but, uh, but that's great, man. That's awesome. Yeah, so uh, what uh, what have you been up to the last week? You know, with being on vacation, I haven't really, I haven't yeah, got to talk honestly, to you much until today. This is kind of just so. us catching up here. Uh, unfortunately, my my situation is a little little sadder. But before I get to the sad part, I mean, we uh, Steph and I actually went to a concert. Um, not prog, not metal at all. Um, <laughs> oh we, yeah, we went and saw OAR and Dispatch. Um, it's, they're kind of like jam bands, like in the same vein as like a Dave Matthews and stuff like that. Just chill, just typical kind of like jam band rock. Yeah, I, style I had never, music. I've, I've heard of Dispatch, but I had never, like, I don't think I've ever heard any of their music. Yeah, they have like a song called The General that was real popular. And then, um, obviously, OAR. I feel like everybody probably knows who OAR is, even if they don't know. Like, they have a song called This Town that's, like, super popular. That was, like, the, like, MLB, or at least, like, the Pirates, like, theme song, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I, that one year, it definitely was, because they were the, uh, they, they were, like, the, 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 what is it? The Pirate Fest? Not Pirate Fest. It was the, like... What the hell do they call they, it? Like, uh, they played at PNC Park after a pirate game. Yeah. I, Weren't you did there? Like, yeah, I was. Yeah. Because yeah. we were there, too, and that was before we were, like, <laughs> like hanging out, like, before we reconnected post, like, Yeah. Yeah, that was, like, days. what are they... Is, I forget what they call it. Um, it was, like, a fireworks That's what I was trying night. to remember. Yeah, it was, it's, like... I, I don't remember exactly what they call it, but um, Shattered is probably their most popular song, where it's, like turn the car around or whatever it's like if you i don't know i don't know the lyrics to sing it or anything now like i'm that, just thinking but, of uh... <laughs> but that that concert was pretty sweet um i mean i'm not i i like music of all kinds i think that's kind of been sort of established in all of our episodes and i've been trending towards prog rock anyways so just rock music in general and any concert is better than and you know i'd rather be at a concert than you know, sitting on a couch or yeah, working for that matter. Jeez, <laughs> I'd rather be doing just about anything than working. But, um, but a funny story at that concert, I've never seen a human being as drunk as I saw this one guy. And I've been to some festivals, like all day festivals <laughs> where people are just pounding beer all day. Um, I watched a grown ass man piss himself. <laughs> so that, that was a first for me. I've seen, but I mean, I've seen broken bones. I've seen, you know, blood, broken noses and all that stuff, but I've never seen a grown man piss himself. And, uh, so. I was just going to go into a story, but I don't know <laughs> if I, I want to do it on the radio. Did you pee yourself, Matt? <laughs> no. Did you pee yourself? Was it you? you? You were just saying about the things you've witnessed. I was going to talk about the time. That oh I shit. No, tell that story. That's uh, funny. Uh, yeah. So, uh, just, uh, what show was that? I think that was the 
I think it was at the As I Lay Dying show, witnessed a man uh, get fellatiated <laughs> <laughs> at a concert. Uh, he, Him and his, I, I would assume, significant other. We I can't I imagine I mean, we, that that I was don't. a casual <laughs> interaction. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just like we were watching the show and then all of a sudden I was like getting pushed, but I was like, the pit is not near me. We are at, like at the back of this area. And then like, I saw all the people like looking weirdly over and I was like, yep, this dude is like definitely getting a blow job. <laughs> and so then like security had to come over and like take this man <laughs> away. <laughs> And it was, uh, it was, yeah, it was wild. That's probably the wildest thing I've ever experienced in my life. That's so crazy. Yeah. Not to take away from your no, story. No, that's fine. I just like, you were talking about like crazy shit that you saw. And that's yeah, like, no, I bro- mean, yeah, I've seen crazy. St- I've never seen anything like that. I can tell you that. Um, you know, I mean, you've, I've seen, you know, your typical like flashers and things like that at shows <laughs> that happens. But I, yeah, I've never seen that, but I've also never seen a man piss himself. And that was, yeah, literally yeah. while being dragged by security, it's like a snail <laughs> trail of piss just <laughs> behind this guy. Man, people, yeah, people be wild now yeah, here. <laughs> that's insane. But, um, but overall, I mean, the show, that was, I mean, that was funny to see, but I was wearing a Coheed shirt too, which is, um, I had at least three people comment on my Coheed shirt at this oh, really? our dispatch show. Like, oh, oh, I wouldn't expect that. Like, oh, I just saw them on August 1st. And, oh, were you there? And I was like, yeah, I was there. Hell yeah. This is sweet. <laughs> so, like, people just kept coming up and fist bumping me for my shirt. So, um, I had a drunk man from a balcony yell at me on the boardwalk when I was wearing my Coheed shirt in Carolina Beach. He was like, hey, hey, you. And, like, Colleen and I were just walking on the boardwalk. Like, I think we might have been like eating ice cream or something. It was just like casually walking, like not paying attention. And I heard him, but I was like, there's no way that person is talking to me. But we kept walking and he kept screaming. And I was like, what the hell? Who is this person? And like, are they talking to me? So I looked over and he was like, hey, what's your shirt say? And I was like, Coheed and Cambria. And he's like, What's that? <laughs> what like, the fuck? <laughs> I just turned. I was like, "It's a band," and then he was just like, "Oh!" And then we just kept. That walking. was just it. What yeah, it was like the weirdest interaction. I guess not weirdest, but it was. Hey, what's your name? <laughs> yeah. Ezekiel. <laughs> it was just That's like what I pictured when you said that. <laughs> like I just was. It was really weird, and then like afterwards. Colleen and I were both like had the same feeling of like, yeah, we both heard him and we both were like, there's no way he could be talking to us. <laughs> and of course, like he was and I don't know what it was, but I don't know if it's because like there's weird, you know, like all yeah. the weird symbols and it's like be- very bright and vibrant shirt. But it was like, I, d- I don't he definitely hasn't heard of the band. Didn't so know who it was, just from a balcony. When they know <laughs> yeah. what your shirt said. That's so weird. And there was like a couple below him that were like closer to our age and they were just like laughing. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure he probably like had heckled other people on the boardwalk. Yeah. I could just tell by their faces that they were like, good Lord, this man. <laughs> I don't know. I somehow like I have all of these like strange interactions <laughs> everywhere I go. Yeah. I just I guess I have the magnetism like me being the awkward weird person <laughs> I am. I just attract the awkward energy. Oh man, that's crazy. But yeah, that's uh that's nuts. But, yeah, the show the show itself, I mean it was cool to see people actually know who Coheed was at the show. So I like, you know, I didn't feel weird being at the show because, you know, I like music. So I and and their music is enjoyable enough. It's not the first time I've seen them live. So um overall very cool and and I know my wife had a good time. So uh that's the important part, right? Yeah. You know, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> uh Yeah, that's that's cool that you like I mean it looked like from the stuff you had showed me like the guy from Dispatch was playing like some sort of Oh, that was so crazy. Like, it looked what was like the guitar? I have, I still to this date have no clue what it was. It looked like somebody put the, a n- guitar neck on a VCR. Like that's what it looked like to me. I had yeah. no idea what the hell that thing was, but it was interesting. He only played one song on it and then it went away. Did it have like different, did it, it just have like a different like, sound nothing effect? Nothing sounded or? different. Nothing hmm. at all sounded different. I have no idea what that thing was, but I should look that up. I forgot about it. Yeah. Yeah. You sent me that photo and I was just like, I was like, he's playing the Gibson what? VCR. <laughs> 1976 Gibson VCR. Um, I, VCRs weren't even fucking around in 76, I don't think. But you know. I don't know. Gibson invented the VCR, and it was originally made to play for, as a guitar. <laughs> they um, were actually originally a VCR company, and then they like they very weirdly took a turn to guitar. 
<laughs> oh man. But anyways, yeah. So that was fun. And then unfortunately, um, uh, someone very close to my wife, uh, passed away recently. And so we had to make an unexpected trip to Maryland, uh, for funeral services. So obviously that's sad, but, um, you know, while we were there, you know, in our free time, cause we were down there for like, uh, like three days, two and a half days, whatever. We got down there on Sunday, left on Tuesday. Uh, we tried to make the most of it. We went to some state parks, saw some lighthouses. It was pretty cool. Um, went to this cool, like, it was a warehouse of some kind, but they renovated it. Not renovated it. It didn't, it, but, like, each little, like, crevice of this warehouse was turned into, like, some artist's, like, studio slash, huh. like, they were selling cool. th- crafts and art and different things like that and uh it was like 9600 square feet it was pretty pretty big uh there was like two levels and i don't know i'd want to say like 40 some vendors in there um Hmm. so we walked through there bought a couple things uh it was pretty neat and uh went to some local restaurants and stuff just experienced the area while we were there and uh so you know while it was sad it was still like it, you know, it was a nice experience overall, um, you know, and yeah, getting like to see making some Making the most out of the, the situation. It's like you're there for sad yeah. reasons, but, you know, you got to, like, do yeah. some fun stuff and Yeah, and we got to see some together. people that we hadn't seen in a while that um, were very important to my wife and always very nice to me, too. So that was very nice. But, you know, on the drive down... um listen to uh i just put the release radar playlist on on spotify oh yeah i just wanted to see what was out there most of the time the songs that they throw me on there are awful like (laughs) it makes no sense that it's on there i don't follow these bands why is this here it's like you listened to this song once by accident in like 2008 (laughs) so here it is um but uh, yeah, it's because it's named the same as yeah, another song yeah. by like a prog band that you liked. Yeah, it's always so like some of the analytics or whatever, you know, the algorithm for that playlist is not always spot on. But <laughs> it uh, it threw Dayseeker's new single without me on there. And I really liked that. And I'd only listened to like one or two Dayseeker songs previously. So I just went and put on uh their most recent record or yeah, their most recent full length, which I think is called sleep talk and absolutely loved it. I mean, and Stephanie loved it as well. It was, it was really, uh, really good. I, I kind of wish I would have listened to it sooner, you know, and, but that has me really hyped for this new day seeker record that's coming out in November. So, um, it was cool to be able to listen to that. And, uh, and yeah, I think that's that's probably a good time to transition into like other things I've been listening to recently, which uh, we just did that Hidden Gems episode. Yeah. Uh, and we were just talking about earlier, you know, oh, we got we got listeners in Germany. Check out <laughs> yeah. Monosphere. Um, I've been jamming The Puppeteer by Monosphere a lot as well. I really like that record. Um, I, I've been listening to that a lot, too, after after we we've done yeah. the, the Hidden Gems. Like, I mean, it's, I listened to them beforehand, but just like kind of leading up to the episode, listen to them. And then it was just like afterwards, keep, yeah. <laughs> keep repeating. And I mean, we typically like when we put a band on hidden gems, it's because it's a band that we genuinely like and listen to. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be trying to give you guys bad advice, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, that, that record for me is fantastic. Um, and then it just started shuffling stuff, as you said, as, as it does. <laughs> so, uh, listen to a little bit of like August Burns Red, I think came on on there. Car Bomb popped up. Crypto Dira huh. popped up. It was very, I think, I don't know how the algorithm works if it's just solely like bands that are similar to the band you were listening to or if it's also like bands that you just frequently listen to. I don't know, but that, yeah, it, I think it was an interesting, I had to skip some songs because we did leave late and uh, my wife was sleeping, and it's kind of hard to sleep during like a car bomb. Song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. that's not that's not sleeping music. No, but um, but yeah, and and other bands I've been listening to recently, some throwbacks, the Human Abstract. I absolutely love the Human Abstract, and that's it's one of those bands where it would probably be tough for me whenever they're like uh, like I've seen not memes, but just like random questions where it's like if there was one band that's you know broken up that you could bring back, who would it be? Um, 
I feel like I'm frequently going to say the human abstract native construct would be up there for me too. Um, yeah, there's probably some other ones out there that I'm not thinking of, but for me, the human abstract was just so big for me back in high school that I just, I would want them to come back and they're just, they were so ahead of their time. And, you know, I'm hoping that we do. I, I just told you earlier today, cause we were trying to figure out, you know, like what episode should we do next? And I was like, I want to do an artist spotlight human abstract. <laughs> and you were like, well, mostly I've listened to Nocturne, but I've not really delved too deep into Midhaven or, or uh, Digital Veil. And I was like, well, I'm going to give you homework on top of your <laughs> college homework. You need to start listening to those records so we can do an artist spotlight human abstract episode. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I don't, uh, was he, is Midturn? Is that what you said? Uh, it's uh, Nocturne is the first record. Midhaven. Is Midhaven. The, <laughs> I just second. combined Mid- it. Just Midturn. Made a hybrid album. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, Midhaven is kind of like the turd and like the turd (laughs) between like the meat and potatoes. Like, yeah, that was like, I don't think I've listened to anything off of that album. And I've listened to, I've listened to Nocturne the whole way through. I just like, there's only like a couple of tracks that I actually remember. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, crossing the Rubicon. Yeah. Rubicon. Polaris. Yeah, there's, so there's like a handful Harbinger, there. and then Mia Culpa, you know, there's so many good songs. <laughs> yeah, there. I just like, because I've only listened to it a handful of times, I think I just have those few. And then with Digital Veil, there's also only like a couple songs. That one I've listened to much less. Like I probably only listened to it through once. Yeah. Um, so I definitely would need to uh, <laughs> do my research before I talk I about could, them. I could get hype talking about some, some human abstract for <laughs> sure, but... Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, that's kind of been, I mean, I've been listening to the new Coheed record as well, but that's probably expected of me. So <laughs> um, a little bit, you know, the new stuff that's came that's come out as well. I listened to the new Dance Gavin Dance record. Um, I haven't listened to that yet. That new current single was fucking sick. Yeah. That, it's real good. I haven't. Li- if you've I, not jammed I, that I've yet. not, but oh. I saw that it, it came out. I definitely, it's on my list of. Yeah. It's songs to listen to. I was like trying to uh, this morning, like go through stuff that I've missed in the last like you know three or four weeks with being busy and not listening to too much music. Um, so I like kind of tried to jot down some stuff that I needed to check out, and that's on there for sure. Yeah. What What have you been listening to lately overall? Uh, mostly the the contortionist stuff with the ride down and like in prep for the show. Like I mentioned earlier, have um, you revisited the work at all? Uh, rivers of Nile. Uh, yeah, I did a little like my, myself, Colleen's not like, it's a little heavy for her. So yeah. I like, I don't, she's not a huge fan. Um, I mean, she, she loves the instrumentation of metal music. It's just like, if it's just like purely like harsh vocals, it kind of loses her a bit. They've got some. They've got some cleans in there. Yeah, but the over the ratio. <laughs> yeah, it's like when you when you crest into the like seventy five plus percentage of it is harsh vocals. It usually that's where like it loses her. So um, I feel like even probably Exoplanet will be a little much. It's um, funny because like my wife. Um, Stephanie, my she, wife, my wife, she, uh, I, I couldn't pass it. <laughs> <laughs> she, um, typically is the same way. Like she doesn't vibe with like harsh vocals very often. She loves exoplanet. Like whenever they did that stream during, uh, during quarantine. Yeah. Mid COVID, like peak COVID, they did like the exoplanet in its entirety stream. She was the one pushing me like we need to get we need to get that we need to watch that we need to do that and I ended up like having to work whenever it like first streamed so we didn't get to watch it until like literally the last moment before it like went away <laughs> um, forever. But I got we she's like oh we're gonna get shirts we're gonna get all. so we got like the shirts and we got the like all the all the swag. Um, <laughs> she's a big contortionist fan. We've seen them together. I don't know probably this might be like our fourth or fifth time together and I've seen them probably eight or nine times at this point. Wow. Um. So it won't be my first time experiencing Exoplanet in its entirety, nor will it be hers, but it will be the first time experiencing it in person in its entirety. So that's going to be sick. And uh, and I feel like Steph and Colleen are similar enough that she'll be all right. She'll be all yeah, right. I mean, she like she doesn't mind I like the 
The contortionist vocals, like even the harsh vocals are still like, I think approachable for her. So she still enjoys them, but like we have intrinsic on vinyl and like she, she will listen to it and like, you know, she's not like, Oh my God, but it's like, it's not her, her favorite of them. So like, she won't be like rolling her eyes or like having a bad time while they're performing exoplanet. It just like, she'll probably be, if they start with exoplanet, she'll probably be like, bring on language. <laughs> they're definitely going to start with exoplanet. I figured they with, would too. I feel like, like that's the easy, like it would be weird to transition from the work to language to exoplanet. You know what I mean? Yeah, like and if I, I was also, listening to them in any order, I think it would be like, honestly, to be honest, if I was listening to them in any order, it would probably be exoplanet first, then the work, then language. Cause I feel like exoplanet's a little, uh, a little heavier than the work even like in a different way. But I feel like the yeah. work just has more of that, like consistent ambient flow with like interesting instrumentation with the saxophone and all that stuff that they like incorporate into their music. And yeah, uh, overall, and- honestly, I, I love rivers of Nile. I think this, this is a tour that I'm really excited about. Yeah. I'm really excited about it too. The, the work is such a good album. So good. So it, it's cool that they're performing that in its entirety. And then it's, you know, two of my favorite contortionist oh, albums, yeah. too. Two of my favorite progressive metal slash progressive rock albums, uh, progressive albums of all time. Like, I love those records. Yeah. I mean, like, Exoplanet is, like, almost like a progressive deathcore type, you know, like, the like it almost feels like a... Yeah. If you listen to deathcore whenever that was released, you would probably really dig Exoplanet as well, so... um. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I, I feel like they probably will start with Exoplanet. Like, yeah, it makes it just, the most sense. Yeah, and I think also to like, you know, because the amount of energy it'll take to perform Exoplanet, I think will be much greater than playing language. That like they wouldn't want to save it till the end and then like perform that album like you know exhausted. They probably want to start it off with like the most energy they'll have that day, <laughs> you know, so like open up with it. Plus, then it's like you get the room flowing right off the bat by opening up with it. So I just feel like that's like the natural way for them to perform stuff. And like you said, from trans transitioning from Rivers of Nile to them, it's just like if they went language, then it'd be like heavy, softer then back to heavy and then yeah. like cut it off. And it yeah. would just be kind of like, uh. Didn't see, yeah, it wouldn't seem like it would make as much sense. I mean, and I, I can't foresee them playing encores either because no, like, they've got like to. an hour and a half, all, like it's almost two hours. It's like, I think it's an hour and 40 minutes between the two albums. Yeah. So that's a lot of music and a lot of like heavy, fast music too. That's in like, complex stuff so i feel like they're not gonna like have energy to be like all right and here's two encore songs or anything yeah maybe I mean, they will but back in 2018 uh they did like a reimagined tour which i was looking up because i have a signed drum head with the set list written on it um and so they did like two separate performances that day so they played a set they took a break they came back and played a second set um which is essentially what i'm expecting for this like i don't think they're gonna go exoplanet straight into language i'm expecting it to be exoplanet take a break the same way that you would wait for like like there's only two bands right normally most shows there's like opener main support main band right yeah so the fact that it's just opener and the contortionist i'm thinking it's going to be rivers of nile playing the work break contortionist playing exoplanet break contortionist playing language and there's definitely not going to be an encore yeah like there's no way that yeah that was unless my it's just too. one so like it would be cool if it was just one song and it was like a new song like i could see them maybe doing that but i doubt it yeah the thing with the new song is like since they're doing as like the part of the vip package yeah. they're playing two of them i mean they could play it again and i'm sure fans would be like cool with it because it's like oh well cool i guess i still heard it before you you yeah but But then it's like the person at the show heard it you know the show before me heard it before me so that's not fair yeah and it's like Um, and i paid more so like there's kind of some weirdness there but yeah i mean i feel like just everybody's excited to hear like new contortionist stuff if you're a fan of them and you get more than the songs right we get like a meet and greet and stuff signed and whatever yeah it's not the only you got the vip too didn't you 
Yeah, right? I did yeah. like the the lower tier one. Upper tier. I don't even remember what it got me, but I was just like, take all my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was... and it helps too because like my wife likes them too. So, I mean, <laughs> well, where it doesn't help is then I have to double dip, right? So I have to pay for like double <laughs> you top have to tier pay for VIP, both. but like. I don't get any shit for like spending the money on it. You know what I mean? Not that my <laughs> wife would ever really give me shit. That's like, my damn wife always, always <laughs> on my back. Like that's not something I actually really ever have to deal with, which is nice. But, um, but yeah, that's, um, that's going to be sweet. I'm really excited. And you know, we've done, we've done VIP Steph and I with, uh, with the contortionist two other times, once in Baltimore, once in Pittsburgh at the Rex before it shut down. And, uh, they're super cool guys and they answer like they do a Q&A so I'm trying to come up with like a good question and every single one I've told Steph she's like that's stupid so I need to come up I don't even remember <laughs> off the top of my head I was like I was gonna ask them about Coheed's record because Cam uh the guitarist he uh cites like in Keeping Secrets and Coheed as like one of his biggest influences in starting like music like whenever he hmm. first started out um, I didn't know that. That's a cool. huge Coheed fan. The last time I didn't even ask the question and somebody asked the question like, you know, what have you been listening to lately? And Cam said Coheed and Cambria and Lessard said uh, they asked, what have you been listening to lately? Like in preparation for the record. Um, and he said Coheed's good Apollo record. So huh. um, they are Coheed fans. So like knowing <laughs> yeah. that I wanted to be like, so what'd you guys think of ladders of supremacy? Or like, what'd you guys <laughs> think of that new record? Like, I just, I don't know, but Steph's like, well, that's dumb. You're asking them about someone else's music. And I was like, well, I'm just genuinely interested. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, I mean, I feel like as like, uh, you know, in the progressive scene, it's like everyone supports each other's bands. And it's like, just because like you're asking them about what their thought of Kohee doesn't mean like, oh, well, I don't give a shit about you. It's like, what about right. this other band? It's like, you're obviously there to see them and talk <laughs> and to them. And paid for the VIP, yeah, right? So you, you know, get, they you know f- I like their shit. Yeah, you forked over extra cash just so you could ask them. <laughs> saying, even if question. I didn't, I paid the money. They got my money. It doesn't matter if I like their shit or not. They got what they <laughs> came for. They got paid. But, uh, <laughs> no, well, I mean, I'm sure they're, uh, they'd rather the people that paid them uh, enjoy the stuff rather than it just be a bunch of like angry complaining yeah. people. But the other thing I was going to ask them potentially would be like, what, uh, what were your biggest influences for the new record? Just to like get a vibe. Cause if he's like Justin Bieber, then I'll be like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine that would be the answer, but Dude, I'm telling you right now, whenever somebody asked what they were list, like, what have you been listening to lately? Like while you've been writing the new record back for uh, clairvoyant, he said, like, Lessard said Justin Bieber. Really? But he he also oh. said uh, Coheed, but he said Justin Bieber. So I'm just like, oh, shit. But then Clairvoyant was great. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's just, you just never know, man. You never know. Yeah. I mean, I think, like, they have very wide tastes and, oh, yeah, and stuff. Sure. So, like, I mean, just the fact they have, like, you know, they cover the Smashing Pumpkins song, but like I would based off of their music, I would have never guessed that Smashing Pumpkins was had any sort of influence on their music just based on what they've produced. But, you know, I feel like sometimes they like, you know, bands have an influence, but then they like take it and run with it and sort of like subtly inject yeah. lots of like different you can, flavors. You can see some nineties vibes in like that um uh, uh like the early grave EP or the R bones EP. Sorry. Um, with early, like early grave and stuff yeah. like that. You can see some like nineties, like grunge ish, like influence in the, in like the vocal style. Yeah. Of it. Actually, it's funny. Um, I forget what we were listening to when we were driving around, when we were at like in Carolina beach, but we were listening to something and it ended and it did the mix. And then, uh, my, uh, one of his like his solo songs yeah that did, that uh, use the rest too. came yeah. on that was the song that came on and i was like i was singing along to it without looking at what it was what you know what was on and i'm like why do i know this song because <laughs> it was like one of i forget who it was but colleen had picked the music and then it like shuffled and i was like singing along to it and i looked down and i was like Oh wow! It was like I wouldn't have expected it to shuffle here. Some some of his solo stuff came on on our drive too after Dayseeker. So, oh, um, and nice. again, I don't know exactly how that algorithm works, but um, but yeah, that is, that's funny because I said the same thing. Like 
I had the volume really like down really low at that point because Steph was sleeping. But um, I had heard like I could hear the vocal style. And I was like, "That's lesser. That's got to be lesser." And then I then I like switched it for my GPS over, and I was like, "Yeah, I was right." It was one of his like other songs. It was like one of his newer songs. But um, I really like "Use the Rest." I think it's it a, it's a, a song, very yeah. catchy song. Like it's it's definitely it's not like the you know progressive metal stuff but like it's very good like kind of ambient rock music yeah it's like for sure if you're in like a chill mood definitely i recommend checking that out yeah well that was that uh me asking you what you've been listening to lately turned into like a 20 minute conversation about the consortionist (laughs) upcoming show but uh anything else man anything else you've been listening to lately (laughs) Uh, no that's been mostly it It it's like mostly just mostly contortionist stuff um and then like contortionist adjacent bands that yeah. came up through the algorithm of Spotify. Do um, you see that weird like uh this is like a slight sidebar or side whatever tangent whatever you want to call it. Um did you see Polyphia dropped a single with Rebecca Black's little cousin or some shit whatever the hell that was <laughs> Cynthia oh, Black yeah, yeah, or I, Sophia yeah. Black or whatever. Yeah, Sophia Black. Did you listen yeah. to that? Yeah, I listened to it this morning actually. What did you think of that? Uh so like the instrumentation is Cool, I I like that a lot, but I what a confusing collaboration, dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, what the, that's that what was my thought doing? too. Is like, <laughs> it, I like, mean, it makes sense because like, Polyphia would do that, right? Like, yeah, they would but do I that. expected there to be like some sort of like, either like hip hop kind of drop where like someone yeah. came in and like rapped over it or there like it to go into like some sort of like poppy esque like all right now we're gonna get into like metal here like kind of change it up almost like throw you for a loop yeah it was just a weird like but it was like stayed poppy the whole time and i was like kind of thrown off by it that shitty version (laughs) of pop like just the lyrical aspect like just so stupid i just oh i hated it i didn't i mean i hated that part of it i very much enjoyed the instrumentals but I mean, Polyphia are just, you know, God tier instrumentalists, you know? Yeah. So it's like, you know, God tier musicians in general. So it's like weird though. Like this morning it was, it actually, um, for the first time in its existence, the Facebook watch algorithm actually, uh, which I like never go to, but for some oh, reason I, forget. Oh, I, know I got like a notification like, for watch. I yeah. Got it's like all the stupid fake like yeah, garbage or, yeah, film the, things yeah. of like, well, you wouldn't believe what happens next. <laughs> um, but actually, like, so I cleared out a notification and then I like accidentally hit the Facebook watch thing. And uh, it actually was like all music stuff. And it went from uh, Lorna Shore. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> listen to that song. And then it went into the Polyphia song. And I yeah. was like what yeah <laughs> it was like i mean it was strange enough just like going from lorna shore to polyphia like you know it's a pretty big difference but then it having vocals was also not what i expected and then it being like very like very very radio poppy sounding was also kind of like threw me off but overall i I enjoyed like the instrumentation was really good and I don't think like the the lyrics and vocals were enough to like deter me from <laughs> keeping me from enjoying it, you know. I think it was like it kept me from enjoying it. Um <laughs> she's got a song on the Smurfs 2 soundtrack. I just I just found out. So that's interesting. Huh. Sophie, Sophia Black. I need to Google if she's related to Rebecca Black at some point, because I'm. If not, I'm still gonna always pretend like that's the case. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I'd I, never heard of her before, so I didn't know like what. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not into it. But I mean, that's just my own personal taste. And I mean, Polyphia just does too much weird shit, man. They're just <laughs> like, I don't know what those dudes are up to. Like, I think what? they're like they're in that camp. Like we talked in like our our previous episode about how like animals as leaders and Meshuggah have like their sound and they've like reached the pinnacle of, <laughs> of music. And they're just like, I guess we'll just keep making more of this. Well, but Polyphia like, is I feel like, like the opposite. Polyphia is well, like, yeah, that's how what much I was gonna fucking say is weirder like, can we get? Next? That's what I was going to say is they are like, 
Well, I guess we've reached the pinnacle of our music, so what do we do now? Let's do something completely different. That you know they... that bitch Rebecca Black? <laughs> and I, I say bitch, but you know, she's a very nice lady. You know that, you know that Rebecca Black chick for Friday chick? Uh, you think she's got a cousin? <laughs> Let's see if she wants to do a song. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Speaking of awful music, um, <laughs> that new Architects track is garbage. Yeah, I've n- I've not listened to it. Oh I didn't. I wasn't a big fan of their last album. Like, I really loved their their like OG stuff, and yeah. like that last album kind of like kind of lost me a little bit because it kind of went too rocky. And it's like I and I saw somebody say this on social media and I, you know, so I'm kind of plagiarizing this. This is not my original <laughs> thought, but somebody called them uh, like quote unquote heavy as in to say basically they're not really heavy, but they called them quote unquote heavy Imagine Dragons. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, that's like spot on. And it's just terrible. It's so it's bad. sad. I don't it, it's it is very sad to see. uh a band that was once like held in pretty high regard and like the metal core scene, like turn into garbage. Yeah. It's, uh, I guess, uh, <laughs> we're talking about, uh, bands and stuff to, on a better note, a positive one. Yeah, um, switch that. Switch the vibe. Switch the vibe. <laughs> fit for an autopsy. I saw that they covered, um, walk with me in hell by lamb of God. Oh, God. Yeah. Which is, pretty sweet like i mean i I really like lamb of god and i like as much as i like lamb of god i even more enjoy fit for an autopsy so like seeing them cover yeah yeah, it's just like an unexpected crossover but a cool one and like they do a very good job of it so yeah if you're uh you're fit for an autopsy fan and haven't listened to that yet it's it's pretty cool i saw i actually saw that they posted it because i think um, Randy from Lamb of God, like shared a like a clip of them, yeah, like their video of them doing the cover. So That's sweet, yeah. I have not listened to that. I'll have to check that out. That's awesome. I still remember. Just speaking of Lamb of God, um, Gojira came and played a show in Pittsburgh, um, and they were with Def Haven and Code Orange. Code Orange being from Pittsburgh, so shout out Code Orange, um. And while, uh, I don't know if it was while Gojira was playing or, oh, there was another band called Oni. I don't know if you've ever listened to Oni. They're pro- I have. They're, they're, they're progressive yeah. metal band too, yeah. right? Um, It was while Oni was playing, Randy from Lamb of God came out of nowhere and did vocals for them for a song. Huh. Lamb of God was not in Pittsburgh. <laughs> they were not like touring. Like they, he was just there for some reason. I think he's... Yeah, and he's from Richmond, Virginia. I'm pretty sure. Which is so not like, like not an close. Easy drive. Yeah. yeah, no, it's like it's probably like a good six to eight hour drive, depending yes. on how many stops you need to make. So no clue why he was in Pittsburgh that day, but I still remember just him randomly showing up, and I was like, "What the hell is he doing here?" But I, was, <laughs> I mean, it's like is Lamb of God on this bill? No, uh, but that was pretty cool. Um, that is cool. Random tangent there, but yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean. I, I think that's kind of where we should wrap up maybe unless you have anything else you wanted to talk about, but no, it's a pretty much all like in the way of like new music, new announcement yeah, things. What we've been listening interest, to just kind know? of, you know, a bunch of tangents and a bunch of random <laughs> conversations, talk about our life a little bit, you know, we definitely want some feedback. I need, I mean, you know, let us know what you thought. Uh, is this better than what we were doing previously on the general transmissions? I mean, I enjoyed that. I had a good time. I mean, yeah, I, <laughs> it felt I like a lot, it. <laughs> it felt a lot looser, you know, just like just yeah, just, just going with a, a natural bit. conversation instead of like rapid firing news things. You could tell I was, you know, I was swearing a little bit more. Sorry about <laughs> that. Uh, <laughs> but I was just, you know, I was in my comfort zone. It felt good. It felt yeah. Uh, just like a conversation, which is what we were trying to accomplish, I think. Yeah. I mean, if, if everyone, like, you know, for some reason relies on us for their news, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know, I'll let us know. I've been outdated for a long time then because yeah. we haven't done an episode like that or, you know, <laughs> a, a general transmission. And yeah, and I, th- I like think that's episodes. why we kind of strayed away from doing them is because they're like, they are more like structured. So it takes more like research to do to like get 
topics that we feel like people will be interested in that listen to our podcast. And then it's like and if they were interested in it, they probably already found out about it or knew about it anyway. So it's, yeah, yeah, and it's like, I don't know. So we just like didn't really know where it fit. And I don't know. I just feel like General Transmission as a name is like, you know, general. Yeah. And so, so like could we could kind of make it whatever. So I figure like if we just do it as kind of like a state of the podcast and like talk about our musical interests and like share a little more like personal stuff, then like, you know, maybe that's a better use of the format, but you know, everyone let us know what you think. If you want us to go back to the news stuff, let us know. Uh, you know, yeah. we're, we're welcome to, to changing and adapting. So yep, you we know. are definitely, uh, you know, open to open to whatever and any ideas that you know you guys might have for future episodes like we said at the beginning we're working on some on our own but if there's anything that i know we got some feedback for like doing an artist spotlight for tool i did see that somebody asked us about that and that's something that i'd be willing to venture into that's something i would definitely yeah. have to do homework on but yeah um but you know and, and they've got ideas. a catalog so that's like oh, that's yeah. quite uh, a bit of homework that might be like a part one part two type situation <laughs> but um you know and anything that you guys would want to you know any direction you'd want to see us go and we'd appreciate any feedback and again thank you guys so much for the support and uh you know for helping us make it this far and yeah it means a lot and you know stay tuned for that potential sponsorship announcement hopefully coming soon maybe even before this drops we'll see and uh yeah, hopefully. If, yeah, that would be great, hopefully. And if not, um, you know, we, we like I said in the beginning as well, uh, potentially might have like some merch options, maybe some giveaways here in the near future. So, yeah, keep an eye out. And, you know, as always, rate, subscribe, like, all that stuff. Keep us going. Keep us trending. Keep us on those charts. And uh, we appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks, everyone.